<clears throat> okay, so the final section in here was on partial fraction decomposition. We got this right, PFD sometimes. So it's, it's like reverse common denominator as we've already talked about. Um, on the test, I'll either have you work some out. I may actually just have you say, well, here's the form I would use but I'm not going to work it all out because there ends up being too many parts to it. Here's, here's what I mean. So if I had something like one over say uh, X cubed plus three X squared plus um, two X, I think that works out okay. Yes. So uh, find the partial fraction decomposition, maybe because you want to do an integral of it. Um, but the key is to uh, factor um, and then realize how the, the partial fraction part decomposes. So you realize that the, at least this factors as x and x squared plus 3x plus 2. Because they all have x's in them, so you can factor out an x, so that's good. And then, and that happens every time you have a cube, you'll be able to factor it into an x and an x squared term of a certain kind. So, but then can you do anything with the rest? And this one, you can try uh, and you factor and you're like, oh, okay, good. This factors as x plus two and x plus one. Does that work? Yes. Okay, so if you were to then multiply it back out, that would work out. Um, so, if you wanted to go into what the decomposition is, anytime you have these things that are just one power, x to the 1, x to the 1, x to the 1, these are called monomials. Uh, they each get their own fraction. So you get something over x, something over x plus 2, and something over x plus 1. And this is where we said, well, we could guess and check, but with 3, it's going to get difficult. So uh, we just put in placeholders. But what should the placeholders look like? The answer is if it is a 1 degree, so x to the 1, it's a number. So some number A is going to be for the fraction X, B for the next one, and C for the next one. So at least on the test, if I said, what would the form of the partial fraction be? This, this is where you would just work to here and just stop. Because what, what else is left? You've got to multiply everything out, get a common denominator, figure out A, B, and C, and you get, I'd rather you spend more time on the, the integral stuff than get bogged down in algebra, where it's really easy to make a mistake. So some of them are just sort of, that's the setup um, on that. Now, this is pretty sensitive to changes. So if I tweaked it and looked at another example, x cubed plus 3x squared, and then just plus x without the 2 in there. So now you try again. And um, let's see. Uh, we can still factor x x and x squared plus 3x squared plus, or 3, I ah, don't have a square anymore, let's get rid of that, 3x plus 1. And you try it and factor that out like we just did. And good luck. Uh, you can't factor it nicely by doing just like x and x, because you'd have 1 and 1, or minus 1 and minus 1, or two things that multiply to be 1. So it's certainly not going to be nice. You could draw a quadratic formula to figure out what these are, but it actually doesn't work because you'll end up getting imaginary numbers as well. So the point is, is this guy right here is uh, not uh, factorable, uh, at least not using real numbers. <laughs> so it's not factorable, or we call it irreducible. A sort of fancy word. You can't factor this x and x and something like that. So the form on this is now we, they each get their fraction, but there's two of them and you, that you can't break, break down further. So x on one, x squared plus 3x plus 1 on the other one. And now here's the catch, is what goes on the top. And the point is, is if it's a 1 power, then you, get, you do get a number. So again, this is a different problem. Uh, if it's a square that's irreducible, 
it's not just a number, it's a number times x plus c. So you end up getting this like one degree down from a two to a one, and that is the setup. So that would be the setup for that problem uh, on both of them. Um, and that's, that's as, kind of as hard as they get, is the number, it's either a number on the top or a number x plus c on the top. What about if it's like um, a, a number plus has x, or x plus a number squared? Um, on the bottom? On the denominator. Um, let's see. So, well, let's see. If I did x cubed plus x, well, we'll do like plus minus. Then you could factor it as x and x squared plus 9. And that is not, it's irreducible, it's not factorable as well. So they would each get their own. And because this is a 1, this becomes a. Because this is the square, this becomes bx plus c. So this is x squared plus a number squared. Although maybe maybe I misunderstood. You mean in parentheses? Yes. So like um, x plus three squared. Okay. Right. So now this is where it gets slightly slightly different. And uh, I don't know if we have. I don't think we covered this yet. So, but it's not hard to to fix. So you might have a question that looks like this. Uh, let's say x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. You might have something like that. So you try again. And it turns out that this factors is yeah, x and x squared plus 2x plus 1. So that does factor an x out, as we'd expect. And then we might go, well, can we factor this? And the answer is yes, you can. It's x plus 1 times x plus 1. So you get down to x plus 1 squared. And now this is new. This is new. So the form of this, you know, it's just a little tricky. But it turns out it looks like you only have two terms, but you really have three in there. And it's hard to justify why this works unless you do a lot of algebra to figure it out. But you get an x, and you get an x plus 1, and you get an x squared, x plus 1 squared. Um, is how this the decomposition works out. So if you have a square there, it's kind of like becomes two terms and not just one. Um, uh, one last question. Uh, what about if it's a non-reducible function that is squared? Okay, so we'll do that. But what goes on top here, this is the, what goes on top here is you look at the base and you look at the power on that. Is it a one or a two? Well, it's a one, so this gets an A. This one here, the base is x plus one, so it's a one, so this gets a B. This one looks like it's x squared, but the base of it is the inside. So that's a one as well. So this actually ends up being a C and not like CX plus B, even though they're each x plus a squared. Um, and before I answer your question, you can even go further with this. We just might be like x and x plus one cubed. This is why we don't do this on the test because it's, it's like I have to work all this out. How many do I have? Well, it looks like there's only two, but there's actually four because you get x, you get x plus one, you get x plus one squared, and you get x plus one cubed. Why is this? It's a pattern recognition thing. And you can, in this case, you might want to just memorize it. Trying to figure out what page this is on. I think it gives you the general general form. Yeah, and it's a little ugly, but page three fourteen is what summarizes it. Um, but you get as many terms as you have repeats on the power, and then what goes on the top? You look at the base to determine whether it's a number or a number x plus c. And the base on all these is 1, 1, 1, 1. So it's A, B, C, D. So it's realizing that you have four because of this, four terms because of this three power. And all the tops are numbers because of what's inside. So maybe you can already answer your question, Travis, that if this is a square, you do the same thing, you'll get four terms, but then you look at the base to determine whether it's Bx plus C or just a number. So for example. 
Well, let me just take the one we just did. If this was x and x squared plus one cubed, then the answer is you get four terms. You get x, x squared plus one, x squared plus one squared, x squared plus one cubed. Now what goes on the top? Look on the main, the base part of the bottom. This is an x to the one, so you get an a. This is a square and it's not reducible. So this is dx plus c. This is, the base is like an x squared plus one, which is irreducible. So this is dx plus e. Same thing here is so x plus p. Now you definitely don't want to work all the algebra out. You have to figure out seven, seven variables. The one, the one that is tricky is, if that isn't tricky enough, is something that looks like this. If I said x cubed minus x squared on the bottom. So this factors as um, 1 over x squared times x minus 1. So now you're like, well, look at x squared. Is that like an x squared that's not reducible? Or is it an x squared that I could write as x times x? Which one is it? And the answer is it turns out you can do it either way. Is if you wrote this like this, just for emphasis, x minus zero squared, then you could write this as three things, x minus zero, x minus zero squared, and x minus one, and the base is all one power, so it's a, b, and c. Or you could write it like this, where you said it's actually x squared plus zero, and Treat it like um, like a, an irreducible. This is the only special case where this works is if it's an x to a power. Uh, and not only that, it's if it's x squared. So you could write this as ax plus b, and then c over x minus one. And why are those two things the same? Because I could write this bottom one here as, as ax over x squared and b over x squared, and I can cancel one of the x's, and I'll get a over x and b over x squared, which is exactly what that is right there, a over x and b over x squared. So it doesn't matter which one you do. I think this one might be easier because the tops are all numbered, but there you go. And however many factors you have is how many terms, so we could get really ugly really quick. It's too big. Okay. Well, I don't know if that feels like a lot. It's it's like what four sections, u sub integration by parts, all these trig integrals, and then partial fractions. Um, so that's pretty much what's on the table. So now I can just open it up to see if there's questions that you have on any of that. If you want to see more of those? Any any, any of those plus. I think there's probably homework due today. There's like homework due every day. That was on uh, six. So 6.5, which is this stuff we just did. That's due today. Questions on anything? Could you please do number 17 from 6.5? Yeah, this one was Hartman being a jerk, I think. Um, 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. Okay. 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. Oh, that's number 18. Oh, thank you. I got the numbers off here slightly in my notes. Well, okay. This is 18? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, sorry. I don't, I don't, did you have to do 18? I don't think so. Mm -mm. Okay. So, but I'll show you this one anyway. Uh, because if you look at it, it turns out that the top is exactly two times two x times x squared minus two x plus three 
over x squared minus 2x plus 3. And those cancel, and you just get the integral of 2, which is 2x. So if you're like sitting there going, how do I, how do I like factor that out? It's going to be a nightmare. And the answer is nah, we just can't do this to it. Okay, 17, try again. 17. Oh, you're not going to like this one either. Uh, because you have to divide. So even though the denominator does factor out nicely, this is this power is too big. So we have to divide first. Bummer. Okay, so x cubed divided by x squared minus 2x. So x squared. So we have to divide first. Uh, this goes in x times. So we'll have x cubed minus x squared minus 20x. Track and we will get x squared plus 20x. Yes, and then that goes in one time. So we get x squared. Uh, x squared minus x minus 20 and then subtract. Uh, so we get 21x plus 20. So before you can do anything, you divide it and we got x plus 1, uh, and then the remainder 21x plus 20 over x squared minus x minus 1. Okay. So now, the first two are easy. The second part is where we need to do our partial fractions on. That'll end up being one half x squared on x. So the hard part is that one there. So um, we need 21x plus 20. And then we factor this. So it, it does factor nicely as x minus 5 and x plus 4. So we have to write this as a over x minus 5 and b over x plus 2. Now maybe this one's slightly different. We're not used to seeing this like 21x plus 20. It actually is easier than, than, uh, than our usual thing, but let's see. So we have to multiply this one by x plus 4 over x plus 4. We have to multiply this by x minus 5 over x minus 5. I'm not going to write out the whole denominator because they're the same. That means that 21x plus 20 is the top on the left. The top on the right will be ax plus 4a and bx minus 5b. So let's multiply all that out. The denominators are the same, so I don't need to worry about that. So that's just the numerator. Now I figure out a, a and b are in this in this one, and um, so we put the a, the x's together. Twenty one x plus twenty is supposed to be a plus b. Right. So group the x's and factor out an x. Group the numbers four a minus five b like that, and then we're going to need to um, combine. Come on. We're going to set up our system of equations here. And, um, all right, I don't think it's very pretty. But we'll put it on the next page here. So 21 is a plus b, and we have 4a minus 5. So a plus b is 21. 4a minus 5b has to be 20. So let me just solve that system here. And you can use reduced row echelon form. Uh, you could substitute. Uh, if we multiply the top one by five and added it to the bottom one, so if we multiply the top one by five, we get 5a plus 5b equals 105. And we get 4a minus 5b equals 20. Okay, 
So I didn't add zero. If I, let's multiply it out by five. Now if I add the first one to the second one, the Bs will cancel out. So I have 9A is 125. It doesn't go in super pretty. In fact, it's not even divisible by three. So that means that A is 125 over nine. And then if I back substitute in, I get that B, A plus B has to be 21. So I just subtract 21 minus A. So B is 21 minus A. That's 21 minus 125 over 9, which is 189 minus 125. 64 ninths. The old B is 64 ninths, A is 125 ninths. So if we go all the way back to the beginning, we end up getting this. X cubed over X squared minus X minus 20 will be 1 half X squared plus X. So that's one half x squared plus x. A is over the five part. So that's 125 over nine over a minus five. 64 over nine is over the x minus plus four. And we still have to do the integral of those. But they're both pretty simple natural logs. So one half x squared plus x plus 125 over 9 times the natural log of x minus 5 plus 64 over 9 times the natural log of x plus 4. And yeah, technically we put in absolute values to get the most correct answer. But there it is. Thank you. Yeah. What else? Like 11, I think you did 11 or not. Because I think this x plus 7 over x plus 5 squared, this ends up being um, now that because it's a square, trying to figure out what this form is, we have to use the factor. So x plus 7 over x plus 5 squared actually has two parts. It has an x plus 5 squared. And it's got an x plus 5 squared. And these are both a and b. They're both numbers. So that sometimes is the hard part is the setup is how do we know what the form is? And again, because it's a repeated uh, root, x plus 5 and x plus 5 again, we get two terms. One that has 1 and one that has 2. And then the top is numbered because the base is like a line. So this one, if I multiply this top and bottom by x plus 5, get it converge. Uh, x plus 7 equals ax plus 5a. Well, and b, that already has a denominator, so I'll just get b. Um, so I think you can see that a is 1 and b is 2. It's a fairly simple one. A has to be 1 because it's the only x term. And then that means that this is going to be 5. So A is 1. And it's supposed to be total 7 when I add B to it. So I get 2. So that means that this integral is just the integral of 1 over x plus 5 and 2 over x plus 5 squared. So at least that's the, that's the decomposition. Here's your partial fraction decomposition. Still not easy. And people screw this up all the time. The first one is the natural log of x plus 5. And you can just check that. Take the derivative, 1 over x plus 5, you're done. The second one is not. This one people screw up all the time. It is not a natural log. 
you try and check your answer, you won't even get anywhere close. So this, this one is natural log just straight up. But the second one here, you have to do a U substitution. U will go back to plus pi. And so we just sort of come over here by itself. We'll have two times the integral of one over x plus five squared dx. So I know it's small, but u equals x plus five, du is dx. So this whole thing becomes two. I'll have one over u squared du. And you're still like, that's natural log, right? Because it's one over. And the answer is no, because this is a square. It only works if it's one over like something to the first power or balanced out when I do the U substitution. This one you have to write as the integral of U to the minus two. And then do the normal thing. So it's two U to the minus one over minus one. It's the usual power operation. Not enough for that. And if I replace, this will be two, times x plus five to the minus two over minus one. But if I just plug that back in over here for my answer, I will have, let's see, the minus, so minus two, so the minus one I could bring out is minus two. The x plus five, well, the negative two power means put it on the bottom. So you know, that's completely so negative two over x plus five. Oh, and that's supposed to be a one. So we want to change everything. And that's that's it. X plus five is the negative one power and we put it on the bottom. And then that's it. A couple different parts to that one. We've got breaking it up in partial fraction decomposition, then realizing that that's a log and that's a u substitution, but we you know, being careful keeping track of all the negatives and everything. And again, it's easy to verify. Take the derivative, you'll get back to the beginning. Um, I think I talked about this last time, but as a little trick on this one, again, if you start to recognize these patterns, um, you're like, man, if this was an x plus five on the top, that would be great. I could just cancel one of them out. Um, so what you can do is you can break it up like this. Break that seven up into a five plus two and regroup it so that it's x plus five and plus two. And you just break it up into two parts. And now this is x plus five squared, and this is x plus five squared. But on the first one, I can cancel one of those out, and I'll get one over x plus five and two over x plus five squared. So a little algebra trick, because if you go back a slide, there is it. Boom, that's exactly what we got for our answer right there. That is the partial fraction decomposition, which you can get from this sneaky regrouping and the cancellation. It takes a little while to catch that one over there. Could you please do number 19 as well? Mm -hmm. All right, so x cubed and um, so you have to try and factor that out. And I think clearly you can see the x factors, x squared plus two x plus three. Yeah, okay, so it's ugly. It's an ugly one. Um, I got to break this up. So I got to break 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 3. Break that up into um, x. And then the question is, is can I factor this anymore? Is, can I factor that or not? It certainly does not factor nicely. Because if you tried x and x, then you'd have to get a three there. And the only thing that can do is three and one. 
and either they're plus or they're both minus. And if I tried plus and plus, that would end up giving 4x. So that doesn't work because I have 2x. So I cannot factor that nicely. In fact, if I try the quadratic equation, it's a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. I'd be unhappy already because I'd have a negative under the square root. So point is, is this is irreducible. So that means it gets its own fraction, x squared plus 2x plus 3. And the top of each of these, again, this is a 1 power, so it gets an a. This is a square, which cannot be reduced. So that gives you, oh, sorry, b, bx plus c. So at least that's the setup. Could you also do like the, the, the art, I don't know what it's called, like artificial factoring or something? What you did in the last problem, where like you split x squared plus 2x plus 3, you split the 3 into plus 1 and then plus 2, and then you can factor. Could you do that as well? Would that work? Well, we are going to want to want to do that um, to figure out what the answer is. I see, yeah, I see what you're saying. So it's it's x squared plus 2x plus 3. You can write it as x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 2. And then that will become x plus 1 squared plus 2, which is exactly what you're going to need to do when you, when you actually work the problem out when you do the integral. The problem is, is you can't, whenever the numerator has things added, you can break it into separate fractions. If the denominator is added in the things, you can't break those into two things. It's just, it's unfair. It's unfair, but you just can't. You can't. You'll need this for when you do the integral, but you can't break it up into separate fractions. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if we were to keep going, let's see. So this one, we'd have to multiply by x squared plus 2x plus 3 on the top and the bottom. We've got to multiply this one by x on the top and the bottom in order to get the right denominator. In which case, the numerators would give you 1 on the left side, because that's 1. On this side, it would be ax squared plus 2ax plus 3a. So just distributing the a on the x squared 2x and 3. And then um, the x I distribute through the bx squared plus cx. Now I have to compare both sides. So to see I've got these x squared terms on the right side, that would be a and b for x squared. So x, I've got two of them. I've got 2a and c. I've got the x squared, and I've got the x's. And then I've got 3a. That's the number term. So what do I have on the left? Well, I have a number term, which is 1. But if I don't have an x term, I have to put in a 0 to balance it. And the same thing with x squared. So I've got 0x squared. 0x's and a number term. And on the other side, I've got these a's and b's and c's. So that means if you look at the x squared term, 0 on the left is going to have to be a plus b on the left. For x, I've got 0 on the left as well, but I'm 2a plus c x's. So they, the coefficients have to balance there. And then for the number term, I've got 1 and 3 a. And then you just backtrack through to figure out what these are. Uh, a has to be a third, divide by three. Substitute that into the first one and the second one. The first one says that b is going to have to be negative one third. And the middle one says that c is going to have to be negative two thirds. So I'm just plugging in a and then solving for b and c. So lots of thirds all around. You may have to go to the next slide, but I think I can remember all this stuff. Not to come back. Okay. So the integral of 1 over x 
x y plus two x plus three. It's going to be the integral. I've got one third that went with x. That was a. And then I've got x squared plus two x plus three. And those numbers were negative one third and negative two thirds. So it's negative one third x and negative two thirds by itself. So that's a, b, and c. So you get down to that. Now maybe to clean it up just a little bit, all these thirds, I'm just going to put the, the, the third on all the way on the outside, just back to that. So of the integral of 1 over x, so got that one. This one here, I factor out a third. If I also want to just make it its own integral, because I think I'm going to want then the top will be negative x minus 2. I don't really like the negative, so I'm going to put factor out a negative there as well. Okay, so is that good so far? Yeah, I think I understand it now. Thank you. Do you want to keep going or, or are we good? Um, I think I'm good, but I just want to check the second, the second integral in here, the x plus 2. Um, that one is u substitution, right? No. No? No, it looks like it is. I don't think so. Because if you do u substitution, what the du will be 2x plus 2. And I don't have 2x plus 2, I've got x plus 2. So if I had 2x plus 2, I would be good. If I had, if I had let's, what are, let's see. Hmm. Right, so if I, let me just write this down. This is where the sneakiness comes in, I think. U, U equals x squared plus 2x plus 3. DU would be 2x plus 2. If I at least factored out of 2, if I had, if I had x plus 1 here, then I could like double it and I would be okay. The problem is, is like this two would be the double, but the x is not double. So this is where you, where it just comes with practice to realize I really want to just have x plus one on the top. That would be great because the, because then I could divide and I'd have x plus one dx and everything would work out great. But I can't just do that because I have a two. <laughs> and I can't oh, that's where you do the, the factoring thing from the beginning. You do the, uh, yeah, the split up thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can split it up like this. You write that two as one plus one. And then one of them goes here and then the other one goes over here. Like that. So those two together would come back to be x plus two, but at least now I can do the u sub on that. So this one, you do what you told me to do from the beginning, is you write this as one over x plus one squared plus two. And now that one right there is, is arc tangent. That's arc tangent of x plus one over the square root of two. And I think there may even be like a square root of two up front too. One over, it's a one over a arc tangent. Yeah, so this would be one over square root of two. So that's using that integral of one over u squared plus a squared dx is one over a arc tan inverse tangent x over a. And in, your, or, or, and in your problem, you really have that u is x plus 1 and a is square root 2, because the formula has an a squared in it. So you get that. 
this one does turn out to be a natural log of x squared plus 2x plus 3 and then divided by 2. And then that one turns out to be a regular natural log. And then you got to make sure to put all, you know, one third goes here, minus goes there, minus goes there. Yeah. Again, this is one if you have a lot more time, I think on these, they're, they're hard. Take a while. Is anything on the test going to be this hard? I hope not. I don't think so. Okay, good. Or if it was, I mean, you might have one that's like this little piece right here by itself. I mean, that, that's possible to go, oh, that little trick of complete the square and then go, oh yeah, it's like that. So that might be as difficult as it gets. This whole thing of like work it out, A, B, C. What happens if you made like a little error and you got X plus, X plus nine or something, or three X plus nine and, and you try to work this through and you're like, I don't, know. I don't want to grade it. <laughs> you don't want to do it for sure. I don't want to grade it uh, because it's stupid little things that usually throw people off. I'll just leave it at that. All right, still have a little bit of time. Any, any other ones you want to work through? Well, um, again, I would, the homework when you turn it in, if you do the problems, you work them through, make some attempts, write some little notes and say, hey, I can't figure this out. Can we go over it in class? I do try and make sure I read all of that stuff. And I was just wondering, sorry, I was just wondering if it would be 26 possibly. Sure. Or six, is that 625? I guess it could be kind of kind of um yeah it's it's fairly similar that this this x squared plus ten x Plus 27 does not factor. It does it doesn't factor? Um, how do you know it doesn't factor? Well, you can try. What things multiply to 27? Well, one in 27, or three in nine, and you work those out, and none of them factor out to get 10x. So that means it could be a ugly number. And the way you figure those out are by looking at the quadratic equation. So it would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 100, minus 4ac, so 4 times 27. So that's 108. And right off the bat, you've got a negative inside of the square root. So that means that the, you, you can't factor this using real numbers. So that is irreducible. It is partially reducible, partially factorable in the sense that you can complete the square. And in order to do that, you'd have to have a 10, take half of that, which is five, you square it. You'd really like this to be 25. So if this was 10x, 10, 2x squared plus 10x plus 25, then that would factor as x plus five squared. But the problem is, is you don't have 25, you still have two more on top of that to get 27. And so you just have to leave it um, as x plus five all squared plus two when you work the integral out. But as far as the partial fraction decomposition, this is going to be a over x plus two and bx plus c over x squared plus 10x plus 27. And so you figure out what a, b, and c are. This is going to be a natural log for sure. Um, this one is going to be, again, like we just saw, it's probably going to be a combination of natural log and an arc tangent of some kind. Um, you, could, you could luck out where lots of stuff cancel and you just get arctan or lots of stuff cancel out and you just get natural log. 
but it's probably going to be a, a combination of those two. So just like we did in that, in that last one. Uh, what about number 15? Okay, so yeah, this one is now. Well, wait a second. Now I've got numbers in front of the X's. Um, and the answer is it doesn't change the form of it at all. That if you wanted to, you could just factor out a seven, a five, and a three. I'm not gonna let me just, you know, I'll just write it down once I do it. But um, if you if you wanted to, you could just look, could be, sorry, um, a little bit of space. I could factor out seven times five times three. And then the bottom, the top would be the same. And then the bottom would be x plus three sevenths, x minus one fifth, and x minus one third. And then you can just write those out as a over x plus three sevenths, b over x minus one fifth, and c over x minus one third. Okay. If you wanted to. Um, it's not super pretty. You've got all these other fractions you're going to have to deal with, but it may not actually be. I don't know. I mean, the algebra, if you can keep it as simple as possible, keep it as simple as possible. So um, instead, they each get their own fraction. So right again, 7x plus 3, 5x minus 1, 3x minus 1. They're similar idea. If you, you get 7x plus 3, 5x plus 1, minus 1, and 3x minus 1 all get their own fractions and because the base is like uh, the highest powers of one, we can always say this too. Um, but now the algebra here is just annoying. You've got to get a common denominator by not only multiplying by one thing, you've got to multiply by two. So the a part here has to multiply by the 5x minus one and the 3x minus one. And the b I got to multiply by 7x plus three and 3x minus C, I got to multiply by both of those two. So you see 94x squared minus 10. If you work this out, it would be a times 5x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. And then b would be multiplied by 7x plus 3 and 3x minus 1. And the c would be multiplied by 7x plus 3 and 5x minus 1. So the, it's not technically harder, it's just keeping track of all of the numbers harder. Um, do you want me to keep going or is that sort of what you were? Yes, sir. Keep going? Yes, sir. Well, that's not very nice. Uh, I can't. The Chelsea, supporters. The Chelsea supporters. <laughs> okay, so. It just, it really is, once you figure that this is the form, it is algebra, get a common on there and just multiply all this stuff out. So I can easily make mistakes just like you guys. So if I multiply this out, I get 15x squared, I'll have minus 8x as the cross term and plus one. And then B will be 21x squared. You see, this is nine and minus seven, so two x and then minus three. And then I get 35x squared, 15, so I get 8x minus 2. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, 94x squared minus 10x. I don't want to put plus 0 just because it's the x squared term, the x term, and the minus term, or the constant term. Where the, oh, sorry, this is the Where did the 0 come from? Uh, well, I, I mean, when I multiply all this out on the right side, I'm going to get an x squared term, an x term, and a number term. 
on the left side, I've got an x squared term, an x term, but I, what is the number term? Oh, the term. There's no number term, I just, it's zero. Okay, okay so we're gonna skip one step here and just say the x squared term, all the x squared put them together, all the x's put them together, all the numbers put them together. So if I distribute all this stuff out, the x squared terms will be 15a, and this will be 21b, and this will be 35c. I'm just distributing it and then grouping and then pulling the x squared out. How about the x's? Well, the x there, the x there, and the x there. If I distribute it all out, this would be minus 8a is an x term. The x term in the middle would be 2b. The x term in the middle on the end would be 8c. Uh, how about the numeric term? That would be a minus 3b and minus 2c. Okay, so now I compare the x squared terms, the x terms, and the numeric terms. And I have to put those into compare the coefficients. I'm going to have to go back and forth on this one. I think. And oh, I'm on slide 20. And since we're only using the like free version of this, um, <laughs> I can't add another one. So what I'm going to do is just, let me just erase up here. This is not, uh, I don't really want to do that, but I don't, this is sort of a side thing. Anyway. So I don't know how big my eraser is. I'll probably take these things. Come on, you got it. Okay. I won't probably be able to solve it all out here, but at least, okay. So the x squared terms, 94 for x squared will have to be 15a plus 21b plus 35c. Because it's comparing the coefficients for x squared. I compare the coefficient for x, negative 10 is the x coefficient here, but on the other side, minus 8a plus 2b plus 8c. And then if you do the numeric terms, it's zero on the left and a minus 3b minus 3c on the left. So you get this system of equations here. Um, and now you have to figure out what a, b, and c are that make all those work. Um, yeah. You took math 103, you just throw this stuff all in the matrix and you work it out. And a, a, B, and C pop out. Um, what are they? Exchange. Exchange. But A ends up in, we can check this. A is minus one, I think B is two, and C is three. No. That's in here. Um, okay, so get that. Um, it's a system of equations. So you, how about this? Just use math 103, put it in a matrix, do RREF, and you'll, and you'll find the answers on the side. I don't, I don't know what they are. That one I didn't actually but it's that's once you get this form if i didn't make a mistake along the way it would be equally unlikely um, you can plug them back in so when you get an integral that looks like the integral of one over seven x plus the seven x, seven x plus three maybe a is 15. Um, this is, is a natural log, but you have to be careful. 
it's the natural log of 7x plus 3. But that's not good enough because if you took the derivative of this answer, you'd have 1 over 7x plus 3. But then you have to multiply by 7 to just take the chain rule on the inside. So to balance that out, you have to multiply by 1 step. So this integral, whatever a is, you then multiply by a. But if this was a 1 for a, that integral would be this. Same thing for the second one. The integral would be the natural log of 5x minus 1. But you'd have to divide by 5 to multiply by 6. The last one, you have to divide by 3 and multiply by 8. So that's really the only main difference once you get to a, b, and c. I don't know what the exact answer is. It doesn't matter. Wait, so, sir, so you said um, whatever I find for, for A, I'm mm -hmm. gonna multiply it like, um, so I'm, first I'm gonna do like, find the integral for one over seven X plus three and multiply that by A. Right. And B is the same thing. Yeah. And C also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, yeah, that, that B integral, if you did one over X, five X minus one, you take the antiderivative. It looks like a natural log of X minus, of 5x minus 1, but when you get the chain rule to get backwards to verify, you end up getting 5 times 2 high. So you can balance it with a 6. And then, yeah, this will have an a in it, and then you just multiply this by a. And this will have a b in it, and then you can multiply by b. Same thing for Okay. Thing makes sense. I got it. Good. Okay, well, since I'm at the end of slide 20, let me, uh, let me let you guys go work on this stuff. If you have questions throughout the day or the evening, send me a text, send me an email. You can do it by email or text if I need to hop back on to Zoom, that's fine. Tomorrow morning, we'll have, we'll have like about half an hour like normal to answer some questions. We might come up with tonight. And then the test will be an hour. Open book, open note, same thing. You just Download it and you have a 90 minute block to turn everything on. So, um, that's probably a great place to stop. Um, that's you Monday. So, um, good luck studying for the test and I'll see you in the morning. You're making weird noises. It's morning, sir. It's morning.